Yeah, I'm so glad to minister God's uh, word unto you again. And uh, thank you, Nelson, for giving me another opportunity uh, to share God's word. And um, the title of my message today is... Uh, A new reality, a new vision. A new reality and a new vision. Uh, that would be my title today. If somebody comes to you and asks you, do you know Jesus? What do you answer? Probably you may say that I know Jesus. And what if they ask you again saying, how do you know Jesus? What would you answer? Or let me simplify it. And if the, let me simplify the same question. What would you answer for the question, where does your faith stand? On what basis you are believing in Jesus? Or in other words, on what basis you can say that you know Jesus? What will you answer? Think about it for a moment. Many would answer this way, and once upon, once upon a time, I also used to answer this way. If somebody asked me, how do you, I know Christ? I would say, oh, I know Christ, and I believe in him, because uh, the history says that Jesus exists. He came here 2,000 years ago. There are enough historical proofs for that, uh, and uh, I know them. I have studied them, so I know Jesus through them. And I would say there are archaeological proofs also which were strongly proving that Jesus existed. And uh, because of that, I'm believing in Jesus. Or we may say, oh, there are so many philosophical reasons for me to put my faith in Jesus Christ. And that's why I'm believing in Jesus. Or we may also say there are scientific proofs to say that Jesus exists and whatever the message that Bible teaches is correct because of the scientific proofs. Or uh, we may say, you know, I have seen so many miracles in my own life or in the lives of others. And because of those supernatural works, the disciples of Jesus perform supernatural works. The pastors and leaders these days, the preachers are present, are doing supernatural works. I have seen those miracles and experienced them. That is why I know Christ and I believe in Christ. We used to answer this way. And in fact, I was in that position. And I would like to ask you, where are you? If somebody asks you the same question, how do you answer? Do you know Christ? Do you know Christ because of the history, archaeology, philosophy, philosophy science, and supernatural works? Or are there any other things? Are there any other reasons? which are helping you or which motivate you to believe in Jesus or to say that you know Christ. There were times in my own life I had, I had this question saying like, does God really exist or he just is in my thoughts? He's only psychologically in my head. There are people who say God exists because you are thinking about him. And some are there to say, you, you exist because you, because you think that you are existing. Otherwise, you don't exist. For many, God the God exists because God is a psychological thought in, a head, in the head. Have you ever been in a place where all your reasons failed to prove that Jesus is true and you know Jesus? Have you ever been in a place where you face that? where you struggle to answer the same. I had been there. And there were times I, I thought for myself and I desired, what if, if God, if Jesus could appear to me once in life, only one time, that is enough. My faith would be strong. And uh, I can even move the mountains. I will never turn myself back from Jesus. If you could appear to me only once. Have you ever got that question? Let me ask you. Do you know Christ? This is one way of knowing Christ. Which I would say this is knowing according to the flesh. 
when our intellectual needs are met when our deep thirst for a reason for some proof is met then we would be able to believe in something that is all believing and knowing according to the flesh if you have believe somebody by seeing that is also knowing according to the flesh so do you know jesus according to the flesh or are there any other ways you can connect to jesus having said that let me move to my next point that is how do you know uh, sorry how does the world recognize people and then we'll discuss how do we recognize people how does the world recognize people the world recognizes people by their positions and positions we say he is big man he has this position he has so much of property he possesses a big car or a big house that's why people recognize others or people recognize based on their age and education he is an old man child young man education they recognize based on gender and uh, sexual orientation and uh, social status the world recognizes people based on their color and unfortunately in our country based on caste and community and uh, people are recognized based on food and there are people who are respected because of the food they eat and there are people who are uh, they were killed because of the food they eat they are recognized based on the food they eat the world recognizes people based on what they wear fashion if you're a fashionable person you are you are a man like you know old fashion fellow so on this basis and many others the world recognizes other uh, people let's look at how do we how do we recognize people in the church and what am i saying is most of the places more in most of the churches this is what we find and we need to introspect do we church recognize people by their by the cash they have the money the property they have or the caste and it's so unfortunate in india so many churches have been divided and still have churches for some particular communities church belongs to only these group of people they are allow only them and especially these things will come out when we look for matches match making when we look for marriages we want we are we believe in jesus brother but we want somebody from our own caste you know we want we believe in jesus brother we want somebody who is rich i i i'm not against uh, finding somebody who have a good career and who is able to sustain themselves that is good but people want to find only rich people even in the church that's so unfortunate we want to find people who belong to our own caste and we want to find people of our own denomination we cannot accept the people from other denomination only our denomination and a lot of people they recognize people by their uh, sir people in the church they recognize them by their uh, color especially if you go to america and all these are very prevalent and uh, we didn't have that big problem in our country but there are certain places people are recognized by their color this is white people church this is black people church this is indian church this is red people church so we are so divided do we recognize people based on these it's so unfortunate now in the church people are recognizing others based on the bible translation that they are using only king james bible is the right people or nav people is the wrong only niv is right king james is wrong okay there are people who are recognizing themselves as you know on the tra- based on trans- translation of the bible and uh, people are recognizing based on mode of baptism there are groups they, they, the entire church is named after one oh your uh, some uh, dubki mission summer sprinkling mission in india that's how in north india they are called 
they are called all the Christians who immerse and baptize. They are called Dubki Mission. Because the low people come and unko Dubki they they. Okay, so we are recognizing people based on the mode of baptism. How are we doing it? And churches are and churches and people are recognized based on the music they use in the church. Contemporary church. Uh, we belong to uh, you know we are conservatives. We use only hymns. People who don't use hymns, they have no knowledge of God. People who use uh, contemporary music, they are worldly church. You know these are the languages we hear in the church. The churches and people are recognized based on the music they use in the worship service. And dress, people are recognized in the church based on dress, whether women cover their head or not. We judge them on that on that basis, and it's so unfortunate to tell. I experienced in my own life. I was supposed to preach in a church at the last moment. My assignment has been changed because I did not wear white shirt. Unless we wear white shirt and black pants, then only you are allowed to preach. Otherwise, you are not. Unless you wear a tie and a suit, then only you are able, you are ready. To, you you can preach. Or if somebody else wearing something else. No, you are not. Uh, in why I remember in two thousand four, I was sent out of the church because I was wearing a jacket. Jeans jacket was the, that was the trendy dress those days. I was an young man, and I was not allowed inside the church because I was wearing fashionable dress, and uh, Christians have to wear only modest, model. Their fashion should be modest. So, wow, where are we? Are we recognizing people based on these, or anything else? And you may have your own answers. The two I discussed two questions. Number one, how do we know Christ based on the criteria we discussed before, or anything else? How do we know people, or how do we recognize people based on this criteria we discussed, or anything else? Okay. Having said that, I would like to introduce you to a new, uh, new challenge. This challenge is not made by me. This challenge can be found in the church, and there is one preacher who was so very strong about this challenge. And you will find that challenge in Book of Second Corinthians. That is, Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul wrote this. He made it. He is making a challenge. He took for he took it for himself, and he's challenging us to take it for us. Second Corinthians chapter five verse sixteen. Here it is written. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. Look at this. He says we are no more going to look people. According to the flesh, whatever the criteria we spoke, he's saying that I'm taking a challenge now. I'm not going to consider anyone based on that. And he then he two more statements. He says, "I have known Christ according to the flesh." We have a criteria we discussed before, knowing Christ according to the flesh. And he says, "I have known Christ according to the flesh," and he is no more interested. To relate to Christ and to recognize Christ based on those, and he says, from now on, I am not going to recognize Christ according to them anymore. So three things we find in this scripture. Number one, Apostle Paul says we have known Christ according to the flesh. He took a challenge, saying, "Now we know him. Thus, no longer we are not going to know him according to the flesh anymore." And the third thing he says is, "We regard we regard no one according to the flesh. In other words, we don't consider, we don't know anybody, we don't acknowledge, we don't respect anybody according to the flesh, based on caste, color, creed, or whatever the list that we have." Let us look at these three statements in a close look. 
Number one, Apostle Paul says, we have known Christ according to the flesh. How did Apostle Paul knew Christ according to the flesh? In John chapter 20, verse 24 to 27, it is a very well-known example to all of us. This is the example of Thomas. After the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus appeared to his disciples. But unfortunately, Thomas was not present there. And then when disciples gave him the report of Jesus' appearance, he said, unless I see in his hand the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my head into his side, I will not believe. He says, unless I touch and feel Jesus with my own hands, I don't believe. That is knowing according to the flesh. It's not necessary that we also should put our fingers into the nail prints of Jesus Christ. But we may seek so much after the archaeological, theological, philosophical, the, you know, historical and what not. What all the proofs. I am not saying that knowing Jesus with these proofs is wrong. But knowing Jesus according to the, our inter, the intellectual thirst that we have is still knowing him according to flesh. That's what I would like to tell. There is nothing wrong in studying about Jesus. We have to study, in fact. We should be able to give a reason. But if our faith is still based on that, we need to know that we are still knowing Christ according to the flesh of him. He met Jesus on his road to Damascus. Physically, Apostle Paul met Jesus. So that is one of the reasons he could know Jesus and he could put his faith in Jesus. And in Philippians chapter 3, verse 4 to 10, he mentions about uh, how he can relate to his flesh. That is how he is a Jew. Uh, he is a Jew of a Jew, Hebrew for Hebrew. And uh, he says that, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may, be, he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcised the, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin. Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee, concerning the zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. He connects himself. <coughs> I truly belong <coughs> to the family of Jews, to Jesus. And I can relate to Jesus well. I can understand the scripture well. And he says, well, this is what he says. I might have confidence in the flesh. He still calls all of these, his knowledge, his education, his birth, all these things as flesh. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 18, uh, he says, seeing that many boast according to the flesh, I, I will also boast. And the list was given below. How Apostle Paul was suffered for Jesus Christ. That was explained. He, was, uh, he received uh, uh, 39 lashes for three times. He suffered hunger. He suffered jail. He he was in. He was drowned in the water. So many things he suffered. At last, he gave his life for Jesus and died. <coughs> Recollecting all the sufferings he faced, he still calls that, saying that my boast according to the flesh. He still calls whatever he has done for Jesus as flesh. So. And now he says, now we know him thus no longer. Whatever gain I have, I consider as nothing. Whatever I suffered for Jesus, I considered as nothing. I met Jesus face to face, but I consider it as nothing because I'm not going to know him according to my flesh. But I'm because we are going to know him uh, in a different manner. He says, now we are not going to, we know him thus no longer. Why? Why Apostle Paul does not want to know Jesus according to the flesh anymore? It is because of a new reality that Apostle Paul encountered. What is the new reality that Apostle Paul encountered which made him to change his uh, way of, to change the way he relates to Jesus? We find that in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Here it is written. That if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them 
and rose again. Apostle Paul encountered this. If one died for all, then all died. That is the new reality. Entire world has been died in Jesus Christ. Everything was died in Jesus Christ. And everything rose again from dead in Jesus Christ. That is why the world is a new reality now. And Jesus is the Jesus. He did not die. Previously, he was persecuting the church, saying like he is a false messiah. And he was killed because of blasphemy. He was killed because of treason. And uh, he was believing that and he was going after uh, the Christians who were following Jesus and was persecuting them. Because according to flesh, gee, according to Paul's flesh, Jesus was, though he is a Jew, though he was a uh, good man, he is a blasphemer. He is a false messiah. And that's how he knew. And on his road to Damascus, everything changed. Uh, previously, Jesus died for because of his crimes and because of his religiosity. And after the encounter, he found differently. Jesus is someone dying for all. If one dies, then all died. If one man dies for all, then all died. And he says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. He encountered the truth that Christ died for all. And in, all, in that all, Apostle Paul is included. Christ died for all, in which he says, yeah, he died for me also. When Christ died, all died, which means when Christ died, I died too. That's why he said, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. How could he come to this understanding? The answer is very simple. When he encountered Jesus, Jesus asked him one simple question. You know that question? It is, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Jesus, Paul never met Jesus. Paul never kicked Jesus. Paul never abused Jesus. Paul never did anything to Jesus physically, directly. And here comes Jesus and says, Paul, Paul, so, sorry, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Whom did Paul persecute? Paul persecuted the church. So, when Paul persecuted the church, Jesus is saying, Paul is persecuting me. So if somebody kicks the church, it is it means they kicked Jesus. And from which he brought the doctrine, saying, church is the body of Christ. If church is the body of Christ, and when Christ died, who died? Church died. When Christ rose again, who rose again? The church rose again. So he encountered the new reality. If one died for all, then all died. And then <coughs> he recognized himself in that new reality. And he said in Galatians, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 onwards, uh, here you will find Apostle Paul says, But what things were gained to me, these I counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of knowledge of Jesus Christ. In order to know Christ, whatever the benefits I have in my flesh, my education, you say, my encounter with Jesus, you say, and whatever I knew, I count them as loss. Whatever the Jew, uh, I mean, the background he has, he considers it as loss. For in comparison with knowing Christ. So in other words, he doesn't want to know Christ according to what he has. He wants to know him in a different manner. And he says that uh, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness. He doesn't want to consider counted. He doesn't want to be counted as righteous according to the law, but he found that righteousness in Jesus. He wants to find his very identity in Jesus Christ. Previously, he was finding his identity as a Pharisee, as a righteous person, by the observance of the law. And now he says, I don't want to be considered that way anymore. I don't want to be considered as religious that way anymore. 
I want to be considered. I want to become considered as righteous, or accepted, or whatever. All in Jesus. I want to find myself in Jesus. That's what Apostle Paul tried, and that's why he says, "Now we know him. That's no longer." How how can we do that? Okay. Have you ever been in a place as I asked previously? When all reason of faith, faith, the spirit bears witness with our faith. There are times where, where our faith may not, our reason may not be able to give enough strength to our faith. There, sometimes whatever the knowledge we got, when they are questioned, we may struggle very badly. I have gone through it. I believe every person who knew Christ might have gone through that. Faith is a journey where ups and downs are there, and we face difficulties, we face questions, and sometimes we may be able to give reason. Sometimes we may not be able to give reason, if not for others, for ourselves. And when we go through this such point, have you ever heard a voice deep within you? It says, "Cool, it's okay, it's okay. I know you. I understand, and you are my child." Sometimes we might have committed some sin and may feel, oh, what a wretched man I am! I'm not considered, I'm not qualified enough to be considered as a child of God. I am not a good person. I, I'm constantly making uh, mistakes. I'm constantly committing sin. I'm ashamed to God. We may feel sometimes that way. And but a voice deep within us tells, it's okay, it's okay. You're still a child of God. That gentle voice is the voice of Jesus. If you could hear that voice any time, let me tell you, you know Jesus in the spirit. It is not based on the historical facts, you know, archaeological facts, you know. It's not based on the scientific proofs. It is taught. It is not at all based on any reason. It is totally based in our heart, in our spirit, where the spirit of God witnesses to our spirit. Saying that we are the child of God. That's what Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 8 or 16. The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If you could hear that voice, that means you know Christ in His flesh. Uh, sorry, in the Spirit. And in Romans 8, 16, 26, He says that uh, uh, you know, Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we out, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with the groanings which cannot be uttered. Sometimes we may run short of prayer and we say, I don't know what to pray. Does God even listen to me? Have you ever been in that place? You're going through pain and you thought, does God really listen to my prayer? And maybe, does God really exist to listen to my prayer? Or am I simply praying in my heart and myself? We Sometimes we may run short of prayer. We don't know what to pray. Sometimes we may lack faith to pray. Even to ask God to help me pray, to have faith. It comes when we go through difficult times. And that moment, Spirit prays on our behalf with groaning and with the words that we are not able to utter. Sometimes we may not be able to communicate. That's where Spirit works in our hearts and communicates to God. I'm not talking about mysticism here. And whatever happens, whatever the witness the Spirit gives here, whatever the work Spirit does in our heart and mind, it will be according to the scripture. Kindly don't misunderstand this again. Oh, it is not the scriptural knowledge you have. It is answering you back and forth in the head. The Spirit strengthens our spirit. And that's how the Spirit works in us. And that's how we know Christ in the Spirit. In Acts chapter 4, verse 8, the Peter, Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. Uh, uh, have you heard this question? Many people ask me well, while I was in Bible college also. Uh, if somebody asks you, you know, what would what would you do if somebody puts a gun in point blank and say, do you believe in Jesus? If you say yes, they will kill us. If you say no, they will leave us. What will you do at the point of death? You know, I was asked the same question. And I don't know, I want to witness Jesus. I want to speak for him. And I want to even give my life for Jesus. But I do not know whether I would be able to do if something 
pierce my hand itself i know how painful it is i really don't know if a bullet goes into my brain how would it feel i don't know what what i would do when somebody put the gun there do you know what will you do i don't know but one thing i can tell you for sure you don't know i don't know because we don't know the kind of strength we have in our faith but when the holy spirit works in us when we know christ in the spirit and the, when the holy spirit is on us we would be able to boldly witness jesus even at the point of death we don't know i'm not telling you do it i do it no i'm not saying that but don't lose your heart if somebody ask you what will you do if you have a gun here and say so i don't know but i believe when the if the holy when the holy spirit is on my head i may even witness for him and you are capable of doing that if you know christ in the spirit knowing christ in the spirit is nothing but listening to the gentle voice in the heart and acknowledging his work in our lives and in second corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 to 4 he says so blessed be the god the father who comforts us and who comforts us in our troubles so that we may comfort others with the same comfort you might uh, have you ever been in this place uh, you had gone through so much of troubles and nothing was consoling you no amount of words from people no you know no amount of people's fellowship might have comforted but the word the spirit of god comforted you in our heart especially when we go through the loss of somebody we love the only person who can comfort us is the spirit of god he knows us thoroughly from deep within we all face some kind of losses in our lives and don't you haven't you experienced that comfort the peace which surpasses all knowledge we may be going through so many problems but suddenly we experience some kind of peace in the heart it is a work of the holy spirit that is what knowing christ in the spirit so paul says i don't want to know him according to any knowledge i have any reason i have any uh, you know physical experience i have with jesus i will but i know christ according to the spirit only i am telling you my brethren even if we people could get to meet jesus directly physically i don't think that our faith would be so very strong that we could even go to the uh, that we can go to the point of death for jesus even if we meet him physically but when we know jesus in the spirit we would be able to stand for him i always had the question why don't jesus appear and uh, now i realize there is no point even if jesus appears also it is not going to change much and i know christ in the spirit so i would like to encourage you also to develop to work towards knowing christ in the spirit ask him he ask him his help to know to help you to know him in the spirit and then he says apostle paul says about the second challenge we regard no one according to the flesh he doesn't want to consider anyone according to the criteria that we gave why why he doesn't want to consider anyone or uh, know anyone according to the flesh it is because of the new reality apostle paul experienced or came yeah, encountered that is in second corinthians 5 verse 14 to 15 uh, 14 to 15 he says uh, uh, if one died for all then all died that if one died for all then all died and he died for all that those who live should live no longer uh, for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again so when uh, jesus died previously he recognized his him dying in jesus he was crucified buried and resurrected from jesus uh, sorry from dead with jesus now he says if, if when jesus died not only me the entire world died so the entire world is a new reality now not only me entire world is a new reality that's why he writes in the following verses 17 onwards therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new and now all things are of god look at the word all 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 everywhere what is all means all means uh, uh, only believers can we say all means only christians can we say all means only jewish people can we say all means only israelites or indians or americans or any particular community caste 
colored people no all means all everybody is included in jesus uh, jesus i mean in colossians it is written all things are created in him through him for him and by him all things are created by jesus is there anything that was created apart from jesus so without jesus or is there anything which was created uh, which was not created by jesus nothing everything was created in jesus everything consists in jesus and uh, don't be misunderstood uh, don't misunderstand me i am not saying all people are saved all people are included in jesus whether they like it or not whether christians or non christians everybody are included in jesus and because of jesus death burial and resurrection especially his incarnation the entire world is a new reality and a new creation and christians are the people who realized it and accepted it that's all and god was in christ in the following verses you find god was in which was discussed very well last week by nelson god was in christ reconciling who the world unto himself not counting their trespasses against them god was reconciling he from his side he accomplished it now he had given us the ministry of reconciliation that is we go and tell people god has reconciled you he is not counting your sins he has forgiven them now you get reconciled with god he has done from his side now you come join him reconciliation is a relational aspect it is a two way road not only one side reconciling two ways we need to accept so somebody gives somebody accepts that's how it works so god has reconciled god has forgiven included and he made everything a new creation now we need to receive it accept it believe it so that we may be able to participate in it so apostle paul encountered the reality that all things have become new in jesus that is a new reality so he is taking a new vision saying like i am not going to look at anyone according to the flesh no jew no gentile uh, and uh, no male no female and uh, he says all are one in christ all are equal so i don't look at the differences child adult male female a uh, rich old educated uneducated believer non believer this denomination that denomination oh, he is not going to look at anyone he considers everyone equally and that's why he says in galatians chapter 3 verse 27 and 28 there is no sorry there is neither jew nor greek there is neither slave nor free there is neither male nor female for you are all one in christ jesus that is the new reality he exp he encountered so he is taking a new vision and he says i don't want to know anyone if somebody comes to me i'm not going to look at him he's a white or black or rich or poor educated or uneducated i'm going to look at them as a new creation of jesus christ unfortunate that many of uh, us in the sense in the wider spectrum christians we look at uh, people based on the criteria we discussed before and i would like to encourage you to take a challenge to live on to consider jesus according to the spirit not according to the flesh and people according to the spirit not according to the flesh so in conclusion what i would like to say is this because of the incarnation of the son of god the world is a new creation old realities passed away whatever the old realities were they are passed away and they are no more and everything is a new reality now you and i are challenged to relate to god and his creatures with a new vision what is that vision we no longer recognize christ and his world according to the flesh but according to the spirit of so i would like to encourage you to do that so the, i would like to leave you with a bible verse which apostle paul uh, wrote in philippians chapter 3 verse 10 i this is one of my most favorites uh bible scriptures i can say and uh, here is a challenge apostle paul is taking a vision for himself for his life i would like to encourage you with the same that is that i may know christ that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death and this is my prayer that god may enable us that we may know him in the spirit and we may know him in a better manner knowing in the flesh is nothing wrong 
and that is the, if it is that is primary and knowing in the spirit is graduation and there is the next step so i would like to encourage you to ask god to help you with the spirit so that you may you may reach better heights in knowing christ and in your faith thank you